Hi, hello, hi. So today I want to talk about something I've talked about in live streams before and I mentioned in my video about VidCon and neurodiversity, and that is nonverbal communication. So I'm going to make a separate video about ASL and autistic people. I will get to that, but I'd like to really focus on music as a means of nonverbal communication of emotion. I deal with and have dealt with selective mutism. I never learned ASL when I was a kid. I learned it when I got a little bit older, so I actually developed my own type of sign language and I didn't know that I had and it was actually like kind of cute from what I understand My mom said that whenever we went to this one restaurant the waiter would always bring me one of those tiny umbrellas that you put inside drinks like a little you open it you put in like a cocktail and he'd always bring me one because when I got one I would wink and Winking with one eye was my way of saying thank you to people and blinking with two eyes was like a sign of like affection Or like my way of saying like I love you or like I appreciate you like it's kind of like, you know I love you, but like I'm not saying it things like that. I would have signs for like food or um like cutting food and stuff like that, or specific sounds, and s anyway. I had my own non-verbal way of communicating even though I understood English perfectly. What has been consistent for me throughout my life and what has been a great therapeutic outlet for me has been music. I play guitar, drums, bass, and piano. The two most therapeutic ones for me have been guitar and piano mostly because they are the most accessible instruments to me. They're the ones that I have always owned and have always been in the house. And I don't know how to read music. I'm dyslexic, so I maybe I'll go ahead and blame that. I don't, I don't know. I understand how to read music. I can, if I take my time and I look at the sheet, I'll know what it's says, but sight reading and playing immediately, I can't do. But if you play something, I can play it right back to you. I have a little more musical theory now as an adult because it interested me and I started to learn, particularly on guitar. I know the names of my chords and I know how to play all of them. Whereas on the piano, like I'll know my notes, but I don't know my chords. I'll just sort of make them up. Without knowing the chords on my instruments, I still managed to play well and I managed to express myself and I would just one note at a time, just like find something that like it just it felt right and I'll play it and I'll be like that is exactly how I feel right now like the sound of this is exactly the way that I feel right in this moment and it was such a powerful tool for me because even though I wasn't always able to say how I felt I was definitely still able to hear what I was feeling and make what I'm feeling into something real and something that others could experience and it made me feel empowered and made me feel validated and really calmed me down it was I think the best way I could explain it is almost I think how others feel after having like a good cry I have always had trouble crying I'll cry sometimes when I'm alone but it gives me a migraine and it makes me feel worse and I actually really don't like crying a lot of people do I understand that but for me it's not a release it makes me feel worse so I feel like playing piano or playing guitar gave me that feeling of release. That's what music was able to do for me. And it also helped me kind of play out to other people how I was feeling. And it wasn't always negative feelings either. When I was like 16, I wrote a song for my first girlfriend and there were no words. And it was like just this sweet little lullaby, almost like almost like something you could fall asleep to and it sounded very cute and calming and reassuring is the best way that I could describe it and like light but also intense you know and I played it for her and she loved it and she would ask me to play it like on loop over and over and over and over and it was a way for me to express the way that I felt to her without having to use all the words because I sometimes feel like words aren't enough and aren't powerful enough and don't carry the weight that I want them to especially given the fact that I'm not incredibly incredibly expressive in the way that I use words. Like, I'm able to be funny and joke, but when it comes to seriously expressing the way that I feel, it does come out kind of monotone, even if I'm using all the right words. So music was my way of adding emphasis or adding tone or emotion to what otherwise seems really flat. I don't like the whole music is a universal language because that kind of erases cultural boundaries and how music is cultural and it is different depending on like Western society or like it's just, it changes so drastically depending on the culture from which it came. We exclude certain types of music or lack appreciation for certain types of music. Or we'll group them all together and be like, all of this is exotic music, but it's like Asian music, what does that mean? It could have come from Japan, it could have come from China, it could have come from India, like it could come from so many different places and we kind of group it all together. So again, I just, after talking to some people who study music and sociology together, there's a word for that that I can't remember. I don't like to use the term music is a universal language. But anyway, oftentimes music is an effective way of communicating without language. And that kind of brings me to the like signed language, whether it be ASL or other, like there are other types of sign language, not just American Sign Language. Even that, I'm not expressive in any way that I communicate. And I know that some people are capable of expressing themselves adequately in ASL, but I cannot adequately express emotion 
verbally or signed. It's not something that I do very well. I always seem kind of indifferent. I always seem like I kind of don't care or I'm a little cold and it's just, those are some of my limitations in my self-expression. When it comes to a really serious emotion, I can't show it well unless it's kind of like salty, I'm good at being salty. But showing people that I care is hard or showing people that I'm hurt is really hard. And music can be paired up with image. Video editing, when I was like in high school, was really effective for me. I was really into stop motion animation. And by that, I don't mean clay figures. I literally mean taking inanimate objects and photo by photo, making them come alive. Like anything, I, I did it with cereal at some point with a bunch of corn pops and I made the corn pops turn into this like snake creature. And like, I did it with a Kleenex and made the Kleenex have its own little life where it moved around. And the mixture of being being able to take images and sound and put them together to make meaning even without language. I don't know, I just feel like it gave people more perspective on me and how I was feeling and how I was experiencing the world. So yeah, we could talk about that too. We could talk about art or photography as another way of non-verbal communication. All the arts could be seen that way. But yeah, so far this is just like a short little video on music and non-verbal communication as an autistic person. Let me know if this was interesting and you'd like me to go in depth with some of the other topics that are related to this like art and dance and photography, I would be happy to and maybe to include some other voices if others would be interested in being on this if they express themselves through another art medium. Go ahead and leave me a comment or write me an email. All right, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, bye.